This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles. It is a 10,000-year odyssey. So tell me, Muse, of that planet of many sources which wandered far and wide the ancient plant of food, fuel, fiber, and cultivated for millennia. As we venture through the past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derives and the many uses of the plant. Hemp, cannabis, hashes, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, cannabis in Uncle Sam. And so our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. In fact, it is current. And that is, last weekend, we had the Cannabis Expo right here in Honolulu. It was a fabulous event, and there were vendors from as far away as the Netherlands, and Oregon, Washington, Colorado, and the Big Island. Just, just a wonderful event. And so today, we are going to talk with one of the organizers of the event, this fabulous cannabis uh, expo right here in Honolulu. And our guest is Kyle. Now, Kyle, pronounce your last name for me. Paredes. Paredes. Ah, that's a beautiful picture. Kyle is one of the organizers of the uh, event, and this is, is this your third year, is that correct? Correct, it was our third year. Now, tell us all about the Expo, from beginning to end, and you as the organizer. What is it, and how is it that you do what you do, and present such a fabulous event? <laughs> Aloha, and thank you for having me. Um, Yes, my name is Kyle Paredes. I'm uh, one of the organizers for the Hawaii Cannabis Expo. We are in our third year this year, and um, uh, basically uh, uh, me and my partners uh, several years ago, we were sitting and talking about the industry as a, as a whole and trying to find a avenue to help advocate for the movement and we decided that this would be a good venture for us to to uh, pursue and uh, and so it happened uh, three years ago was our first event and uh, we launched that without any expectations just trying to look into into what the community what the uh, the state was uh, what their appetite was and uh, uh, you know, surprising to us that in our first year we put in about between four and five thousand spectators coming in for knowledge, information, consulting, and uh, and also you know just seeing what's going on in the industry. And so you know it, it began with that movement. You know, fast forward to the second year. Uh, we increased our vendors by about 20 percent. We we grew about 20 percent, and um, and we pulled in another couple thousand people uh, into the show over the weekend. And again, it was still based around the idea of advocating, uh, providing knowledge and information for patients, and also you know just the the curious person. We flew in experts from around the country. To come in and do presentations and and uh, answer questions from the audience. Well, I was there, of course, and I met such wonderful people and such a diverse uh, group of people. And the little bit of time that we have been doing this program, we've watched this industry grow by leaps and bounds. And I was amazed at people that stopped me and said, "Oh." Aren't you the lady on, on, on Cannabis Chronicles that <laughs> ordinary people, I'm not talking about just vendors, tell us yes. about the kinds of vendors you had, the different, the, I, I was amazed at the variety. 
Well, yeah, I mean, we, we had vendors that were medically based, so we had medical professionals there as well as advocacy groups uh, pushing uh, the legislation side as well as uh, people who are bringing in products from the edibles to, um, you know, drinks that are specifically made for uh, medicinal purposes using CBD as, as part of its ingredients. So we had tons of uh, different uh, types of vendors. We had over about 115 vendors this year, which uh, was, was, again, another 20% over the second year. So uh, we had quite a bit of uh, variety there. Now, uh, tell me the difference in cannabis and CBD. What's, what's the difference? I saw so many people selling different CBD products. I saw Correct. one and, woman selling and, soap and somebody else selling uh, drinks and food. Uh, well, not food, but edibles. So what's Correct. Correct. With CBD? So, so, you know, there's two major ingredients that the industry focuses on and uh, out of, uh, you know, dozens of ingredients that the cannabis plant puts out. But um, two very specific ingredients, the CBD uh, aspect and the THC aspect. Uh, THC is what people are familiar with that gives uh, the psychedelic or, or that high feeling. Mm -hmm. And the, the C CBD uh, is considered more of the medicinal ingredient, but um, doesn't have that uh, psycho psychoactive ingredient. Uh, and so more of the industry is leaning towards the CBD side because it can be sold, you know, through stores and over the counter. Whereas THC, you, you need your medical marijuana license uh, card and, and go through a uh, licensed certified uh, seller. So there's, 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 a, there's that significant difference as far as being able to even uh, acquire them. Well, so if you take CBD, then you don't have a dirty P test. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, you shouldn't have. If it's a if it's a pure CBD extraction, uh, you you definitely should not have any issues with uh, a um, you know drug test or or urine test. Well, now how do you know that it's pure? I mean, what is there on the label that says this is pure, or is this something somebody cooked up in their kitchen? Again, how I mean, do you, you know? hit it right on a nose. Yeah, you hit that right on a nose, and that's why we put together these types of events because there are, you know, your dozens and dozens of people who are cooking it up at home and and have learned through time and 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 you know process to develop their own formulas, and then there's people who are developing these products through laboratory equipment and and procedures. So there, there is significant levels in product quality, and you know, again, it's we're fairly new in the industry, and Hawaii is is again a little bit behind the rest of the country as far as our um, access to the high quality products. So, so sometimes you're going to deal with you know your your home product makers, and uh, and not to say that they're any worse. Or, or you know, degraded from what you could get from the mainland, but it's just different levels of quality, I would say. Well, my question to you then is, how do we know? I saw so many things, and I would love to buy from people that are local. I want to keep it local. How would I know? What is on the? Is there something on the label that tells us this is local? This is not something somebody made up in their kitchen. Yes, I mean, again, somebody's kitchen is going to make it. So uh, that. Well, I mean, as opposed to a certified yeah. kitchen or a home kitchen. That's that's what I meant. Yes, yes, and on on most people's labels, they will identify what the main ingredient is. So they might say CBD from hemp or CBD from cannabis or a uh, full spectrum, or um, it's, it's a uh, 
cannabis um, based product or a hemp based product. So there's again various um, ingredients or var- you know variables that are going to be different. So the that's why a show like this is important because people have to walk around and talk to these uh, vendors and learn about what makes them different. And and it's very hard to say one company is better than the other because, you know, their pr- process and or where they get their grow from is, well, is going to make next, a big... Yeah, well, that was my next yeah. question. So if I wanted to make cookies, where would I get the product to make, to put in the cookies? Where... Where do I get the the CBD to put into the cookies? Where where does that come from? The origin. Yeah, yeah. So so CBD again, the origin can come from a cannabis plant and or a hemp plant. Now, ninety percent of the industry who are selling products over the counter are selling a CBD extract or isolate um, from a hemp base plant and um, and so those are very very low to, to nil in THC and that's why it could be promoted um, on a larger scale more publicly whereas a CBD extract from cannabis is, is considered more of a full spectrum and has has more you know of the THC ratio and so you know, there is that, that uh, deciding factor of where you're going to get your CBD from. Well, do you, can you buy it wholesale from somebody that's selling wholesale for that very purpose for you to make things with it? Is, does yeah, that happen? Uh, again, like, okay, so, so I mean, uh, le- legally, uh, cannabis CBDs or cannabis in general needs to be acquired using you know the the procedures laid out by the state so you need your medical marijuana card you can go to a dispensary to pick them up and or you can go to a um a medical provider that is uh certified or cleared to to treat patients right Mm -hmm. so so that one you can you need to go through that process to buy to buy the the CBD to make the edibles. I, yes. I, and I'm going to say not just CBD because we're, we're just using CBD in this general term because, again, right. they come from two different plants. Now, again, CBD from cannabis, you, you need to go through a particular procedure to acquire those. CBD from hemp, you can kind of get them from anywhere, Whole Foods, uh, really? some of our natural, natural food shops. And some of the smoke shops, uh, they definitely have CBD from hemp. Yes, they're oh. very readily available. Oh, at down to earth, you can just yeah, go. yeah. I mean, a lot of these uh, natural food stores will sell hemp drinks or or CBD based drinks. So it, you know, it's it's pretty um, available out there in the market. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I, that's that's interesting. I I don't know what I thought. I thought that you had to buy wholesale product in order to make edibles and drinks and things like that. Yeah, no, that's why that's why this year, if you came to previous shows, you would have seen a explosion in CBD products. Oh, it was. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So so for example, my my partners in business uh, launched their new product this year, which was the Bambucha Kombucha. Uh, <laughs> I love product. that. Say it again. Bambucha Kombucha. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a kombucha product um, that is enhanced with CBD. Kombucha. What is kombucha? Kombucha is a fermented type of tea uh, that, you know, goes through a process um, at the end of the day, you get this tea that is very high in, in probiotics and live active cultures that's really good for the digestive tract and the immune system. And, and to bring that to a whole other level, we're, we're enhancing it with CBD. Wow. So 
Oh, and and that was the, I saw I saw that name, but it you know I, there were so many booths, and I visited so many people. Uh, yeah, they, they they did. It was their debut show uh, to launch the product, uh, and so they were at the show. But why I brought that up was um, we thought you know there would be maybe ten or a dozen of us selling CBD specific type of products, but when everybody laid out their, their products on their tables or at their booths, as I was walking around organizing the vendors, I was amazed at how many vendors showed up with CBD products. And uh, it, was, it was quite impressive. It was. I, I was astounded to see that many. And they're all different. There were no two alike. Everybody had something different. Yes. Yeah, it's very different. They have different um, uh, potencies. They have different volume uh, in sizes, and then they have different combination and uses. So it was it was amazing to see uh, the the market grow like that. You know, especially here in Hawaii. I was impressed by the numbers of people from out of state. I met one yeah. man from the Netherlands. Like wow. Yes. Uh, yes. And then I met. People, of course, from the Big Island and Maui. The, the man from Maui had this huge belt, looked like a heavyweight belt. And it was, <laughs> he had won first place with this, with the cannabis seeds. I, I guess that's what yeah. that was, yeah. It's yeah, like, they, they call that the Aloha Cup, where, um, you know, the growers around the state uh, submit their, their seeds or their plant uh, for judging. And it goes through a, um, a process of testing to to determine the quality of their product, and uh, and yeah, so there there are people from across the, the the state, all the islands were represented, and I, I was able to speak to a handful of them that were you know just flew in from Kauai just because they wanted to be at the show or Maui or or the Big Island, you know, and it was it was nice to hear from those individuals because. A lot of them came for real information, you know, and um, and again, like you said, there were people who flew in from the rest of the states and internationally. Yes, um, uh, I have this family that grows hemp on the Big Island, and it's a family, and they made all kind of beautiful things out of hemp. Um, yes, I don't remember their names now, but they were delightful, and they had been doing it for years. And we don't think of mm -hmm. hemp as a local product, at least to do what they do. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, if you go back, you know, several generations, you got, you got to remember that Hawaii was really, really well known for their their growing practice of the cannabis and hemp plant. So, yes. um, you, you know, we're not too far behind as far as the, the quality we can produce here. In fact, you know, as far as outdoor growing, there's, you know, super high quality here. What, what they're learning uh, currently in Hawaii is how to do the indoor growing, which, which is a, a little bit more tedious and scientific. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, That's the biggest difference. We need to take a break. We'll be back in one minute, and then I want to talk about growing, because that would totally spellbound me. So we'll be right okay. back. Thank you, Kyle. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, so we're doing. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. 
We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones. Okay. Yeah, those okay. kinds of questions I can answer, yeah. Aloha, and we are back. And we're talking today with Kyle, who is one of the organizers of the very successful Cannabis Expo over the last weekends. And I want to ask Kyle about growing plants. Because if I get a card today um, and it says that I can grow 10 plants, well, my question then is where do I get the starter plant? How do I grow it? Uh, you know, how much sun, how much water, how much soil? Uh, will the afternoon sun, which in Hawaii burns up everything, will that kill it? What do I have to do to get this plant that they say I can use? Um, there's so many questions about the plant. So Kyle, you're on. So let's start with A, where do I get the plants? Okay, so um, first and foremost, before you can start growing, you definitely need to make sure you have your medical marijuana card. Yes. And, and from there, you, you'll be able to enter a dispensary uh, and uh, acquire seeds, so you can ask. Oh, so you get the seeds from the dispensary? Correct. Okay. You can get the seeds from the dispensary. I mean, there are um, other ways of acquiring seeds. Uh, at the show, there was there were dozens of vendors that were seed specialists. Oh, I saw uh, so many seeds. Yes. Correct, and and so, um, but for the most part, if there isn't a you know event like that, you, you you will have to go to a dispensary and talk to them to see how you can acquire some of the cannabis seeds. Now, there are dozens and dozens of different strains, so you have to also determine what strains are best for your needs. Oh, dear. That opens yeah. another can of worms. How do I know that? That, that Or does yeah. the grower or the dispensary or the doctor that you went to, are those the people you ask, okay, so I have arthritis and it's really bad and the pain is, you know, what? Do they, can they answer that question? That, that is a really, really good question. And I cannot speak for the uh, capabilities of each dispensary, but I would hope that it, the dispensary themselves are hiring people within their, their staffing that are qualified to direct people in the right uh, direction for the specific strain and or combinations suited for their needs. And, uh, and, and at least from, from my perspective, I would, I would want that um, professionalism if I entered a dispensary, um, you know, for some particular needs. So, yes, obviously you need to find out what your real needs are, and then there are strains that address those needs very specifically. So, um, you really, you really need to know what's going on if, if it is for some medicinal purposes, right? Well, I mean, but that's what you get the card for, isn't it, for medicinal purposes? Well, you know, again, even the doctors that are registering you or certifying you for your med medical card, they can suggest what to do and where to go. But now when you're purchasing, that's a whole other process. Right. You, you, you need to make sure that you're buying what you need. Right. Right. So that's either consulting with the physician that, that uh, certified you and or speaking to other professionals, that uh, endocannabinoid speci specialists that are um, dealing with certain issues, uh, and hopefully the staffing at the dispensaries should be able to give you a good direction to head in. I saw hundreds and maybe even more uh, I don't want to exaggerate, but it seemed like just hundreds and hundreds 
of seeds with different names. Beautiful names. Each little seed, every little brochure, beautifully done. And the seeds all had different names. Yeah. So then when I looked at that and I thought, oh, well, how do you make a decision? How do you decide okay. which one of these is what you want? And then, okay, so I chose this one. Let's assume I bought this one. Now, if at the, at the expo, if I wanted to buy the seeds, would I have had to show your card? Yeah, I mean, if you showed your card, you should definitely be able to um, acquire seeds. Um, at the at the, the expo, I meant. Correct. Yeah, but but could anybody buy them? You know, I don't know what vendors were um, actually selling seeds. Uh, most were doing um, more of a educational uh, certain strains that they're growing and why it's good. Uh, so that I cannot speak on specifically what seeds or where you could buy them. I, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I just saw so, so many. And then I could, I could smell, as I was leaving, I could smell the smoke from, was there a smoking area? There, there was a smoking area, but, but keep in mind, right, like if you're a medical card holder, you are allowed to uh, smoke as long as you're uh, following the guidelines of the location you're smoking. You know, like uh, some some buildings, you got to be 20 feet or 50 feet right. uh, away. So, so if you're a tobacco smoker or a cannabis smoker, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was just like I said, as I was leaving, I could and outside I could smell, and I thought, well, I didn't think you could do that here, but. Anyway, well, that's, that's another. Yeah, I mean, let's 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 get past that whole um, misconception, right? It's it's legal if you have your medical card. Right. No, I meant it, the because of the building, not whether you could or not, but just oh, no, no, the no, building there, regulations. There was, that was all. Yeah, there was no smoking indoors or or anything. But uh, if you went outdoors and and cleared cleared yourself from whatever regulations that the building had. That, that was yeah, my question. Did. It was just the building, not, not whether it's okay or not. It was, you yeah. know, that you can't smoke anything in the building. No, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And now, uh, tell me real quickly about all of the different people you brought in. I met um, Martin Lee, was it? Brilliant mm -hmm. man who said he was a journalist and started this whole mm -hmm. movement of looking into CBD. He was a very interesting yes. man. Yes. And so yeah, we Go ahead. Yeah, we brought in a we brought in a lot of experts, uh, uh people from growing experts to to how to use cannabis for for medicine to the legislative movement um also, you know, how to use uh the CBD and or cannabis in the, in your health practice. So there was a lot of experts, like you said. Uh, we had also several doctors presenting on on its usage and or the research that they have been following. Well, like I said, I was thoroughly impressed with the whole thing. Now the mainstream media said that they were about 10,000 people that came through. Is that correct? Or more? It seemed like I, I would, more to me. Yes, I, I would say this year we, we touched the 10,000 mark. So again, I would say another uh, growth of uh, uh, a couple thousand from year two. Well, so that bodes well to thinking there will be a year four. Absolutely. There, there will be a year four. Um, and I... I it's going to be at the same location until I believe the uh, convention, not convention center, but the Blaisdell may be going under construction in a couple of years. So uh, they will definitely be there until uh, they, they go under construction for modernization. Well, now, if that's the case, you will, promise me you will, stay with us 
come visit with us regularly as you progress toward the expo next year. So we will. Absolutely. Yeah. So keep us informed. Tell us what we need to do, who needs to register, how they do, all of those steps. So if you can stay with us, we would absolutely love that. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for having me. Aloha.